Hey everybody, this is Birch. And I want to explain a few things about how comics, how people in comics, how various agendas, and, and look, I want to say on the offset, there's a part of me that enjoys watching the reaction I get when I talk about things like ESGs and agendas. People lose their mind. It is the classic, uh, what people accuse SJWs of doing, the re-moment. The stuff that comes out is nuts. The comments that come out are nuts. It's like, here's my opinion. Hey, you should go talk to a financial investor about ESGs and where the money's going. And people respond with a completely straight and serious face. No, no, no. Um, there's this guy on YouTube who, uh, you know, is a professional weightlifter. And, uh, and uh, that's the guy. That's the guy I'm taking my financial advice for. In which case, more power to you. Just saying may not be the, uh, the, the perfect spot to, uh, if, if, if you come into a lot of money, I just beg of you, get a financial advisor, go talk to somebody who's actually in the space. Just, you can still you know, listen to your weightlifter friend, but you just, just protect yourself, okay? Anyway, um, this is where I get confused, and I'm sure some of you can, uh, can explain it to me, so we'll give it a shot. So you guys can help me a little bit. Um, the, the thing with, you know, people putting in agendas, and whenever I say this, people always like, people have said it out loud. You know, Vita's tweeted about making everyone gay and trans, and, and uh, so how can you say there's no agenda? And again, if you listen to videos carefully, I'm not saying there's no agenda. I'm saying the agenda largely doesn't matter for the actual product that's being produced. And I'll, I'll explain it to you this way. And this is where I'm, I'm going to ask the question to you. You can, you can help me out. Um, and then, you know, I, I know a little bit of the answer, but what I don't get is why people are as wrapped up in it in some cases as they are. So the reality of it is right now, if you're, uh, if you're really fixated on say what Vita is doing or what Sana Amanat is doing or people like that, please understand Vita has no active comic work right now. None. Yes, Vita was a thing at Marvel for a couple of years, but still never was given any major title. Kept very much on the background, did anthology stories, kind of one-off things, uh, New Mutants, which was, I mean, I'm a, I love the New Mutants, big fan of that property, a lot of the characters there, for sure. If I'm being honest with myself, it was never anywhere close to Marvel's top 25 books, never has been. There was this brief moment where Rob Liefeld kind of elevated New Mutants up, but they immediately canceled it and called it X-Force. I mean, I, I, look, again, I love that property, but, but fair be fair, right? Vita has no influence on comics at the moment. None. Now Marvel's off chasing, uh, what, Charlie Andrews, and there's other people, for sure. And, uh, and kind of a lot of the attention, I suspect, will float that way, just like, go back to 2017, everyone was talking about mags. 2023, very few people are talking about mags. It's just it's just how it goes you know these are the people who get noisy but they don't last and in many cases that should be good news right if you're you know if you're thinking about the whole go woke go broke stuff um that you know the fact that those people can't make traction don't stick around um you know in theory should be something you're like yeah i'm see i'm right you know i was right i said this stuff wouldn't work clearly this stuff isn't working i i did not see a uh you know, Avengers by Vita or, uh, you know, Justice League written by Danny Lohr. Nobody's, nobody's doing that. They're not even giving, you know, you know, these people or mags or, or any of these people, you know, they're not giving them big books. You know, Stephanie Phillips is not making great headway. You know, uh, you know, we could go to God, I, I'm Gabby Rivera. Where's Gabby Rivera in comics right now? Nowhere because the talent doesn't work. It doesn't sell books and they disappear. Now, in, in full defense, you know, definitely what is happening is you see these people, um, you know, you see new versions come out. So clearly the comic companies are still like, well, let's keep giving it a shot and giving it a shot and giving it a shot. So these new names pop up. And perhaps that's part of the problem, right? It's the individuals wash out pretty quickly. But the thought process behind, hey, let's keep going for, you know, let's keep going for these attempts. And these attempts are almost certainly based on things that are, are not writing skills. Otherwise, you'd see a Mags or a Vita or a Danny or a, you know, Gabby or Max Bemis or whoever it might be. You'd see them paired with, you know, Scott Snyder or Tom King or Dan Slott or people who actually, you know, may not be your favorite people, but they actually have a track record of, you know, selling books. You know, if Donny Cates is super hot in Marvel, if Marvel really wanted Vita to get over, 
they'd have a title that was co-written between the two of them. That's, that's what they do. But Marvel does not care about putting Vita over. They do care about, you know, getting people based on, you know, race, gender, sexuality, uh, you know, books and profiles. That's it. Look, it's, it's just like, it's fair to say nothing is happening with these people. So maybe you shouldn't be obsessed about the individuals as much as people do get obsessed about it. Um, it's also fair to say, you know, the big companies keep going back to this. Well, they go back to this well, because they believe that that kind of social, uh, you know, social dynamic, social DNA is uh, something that's important to them and, and they keep trying it and it keeps failing. And once again, I think if you're one of the people that it really drives, you know, this stuff drives you crazy, um, this should be good news for you. So stop and think about it for just a second. Now there's one big catch and we're getting to it, but this should be good news. If, if this stuff drives you crazy, well, what's, what's better than watching it fail? What's better than saying, yeah, I, I didn't think this would work. And sure enough, proof be proof. It didn't work. I mean, again, look at the big writers that have made big headway within comics over the last several years. You, you none of them, none of them are these demographics that, that you worry about. Um, you know, so good news, right? I, I guess, I mean, like, again, this isn't something that, that, you know, I think about a lot. I just don't, um, because I'm, I'm very fixated on good story. So this is a, uh, I don't know, a little admission to you, uh, for, for years and years as a retailer, one of the things that, uh, I never quite, I don't know, I, I understood it intellectually, but I never got it emotionally was the creator. Uh, many times when I was reading comics, I didn't look at the creator. And if you were back in the eighties, it sounds weird now. I know because the comic companies have promoted it more, but in the eighties, when you're reading comics, you didn't even notice who the writer was. You, you sometimes noticed who the artist was, if their style was very unique, but generally it was, this is good comic. This looks good. You know, art, good, writing, good, happy. You know, you didn't, you didn't focus on who the people were. You just, you know, you liked a good story. And that's where I came into comics. And I think, you know, I've talked to other people who are about my age who came into comics in the, in the eighties and they all have that same kind of story. It's like, they, they totally get the creators now, but it, it's, you know, to them, goal number one is story good. You know, and, and then later you look to see who wrote it. But even for a long period of time when comics were on the newsstand, you didn't necessarily seek out comics by the creators. You sought them out by the characters. You're like, this is a good story. I'm having a good time. You, you read it. Um, you know, very, pretty quickly you, you look and you're like, oh, wow, Perez is on a lot of these. You know, uh, Wolfman's on a lot of these. Uh, Grunwald's on a lot of these. Burns on a lot of these. You know, very, very quickly you come to, you know, it sinks in. But, but by and large, it's about the story. So some of all this is, is just not something I naturally resonate to. But again, I go back to if, if, if these creators and this agenda, if you will, is what bugs you, you have to feel a little bit good because it's not working. Yes, they keep trying it, but it's not working. None of it's selling. And, you know, there's a reason why Marvel would absolutely love for Donny Cates to come out of his funk and come back because he is a, uh, he's a powerful writer. He makes some money. It's successful. You know, he's also not a member of the LGBTQ community. He doesn't tweet about his politics and eh, not much anyway. And, uh, you know, he's fairly generic. He, yeah, that's the, that would be the spear to his heart right there, but fairly generic white dude. That's, that's what Donnie Gates is. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but again, I, I still find the entire, you know, business of, you know, the, the demographics, genetic makeup, et cetera, of the person writing the book to be slightly weird to me, but. Anyway, it, whatever. Now, I said there was a catch, and there is a catch. The problems with this experiment, this idea of, hey, let's get, uh, you know, these people who give us some social credit in to write the comics. The problem with this experiment is that the characters they're putting them on are characters that have lasted for decades. And in many cases, many of you and me have grown quite fond of them. And this is when I do this type of video, it, it hard triggers the other side or the SJW side. And it's this, you can't be shocked and amazed and horrified and everything else when you take an established property and you change the demographics of it. Uh, I, I mentioned this when they did the little mermaid and, and they're like, she's black now in the new movie. Like, I can't believe all the racists are upset. It's like, hang on, before you call everybody racist, um, let's, let's be real. That character has existed in popular media. It's existed in just, 
in folklore for you know, hundreds of years, but it's existed in popular media for, you know, 30 years looking one way. If you change it, people are going to be like, hey, wait, what now? It doesn't make them racist. It makes, it makes them just, they, they bond with a certain image of a character or a place. And everybody just needs to, to get their heads around that a little bit more. When you take a Captain America, when you take an Avengers, when you take a Batman, when you take these things and you radically change them, it's kind of like going into your childhood neighborhood you grew up with, you know, that had shops you knew and stuff. They may not have been the best shops. They may not have been the best neighborhood, but it's, it's yours. It's what you grew up with. It's where your memories sit. If they come in, they bulldoze it, you know, and they put a giant strip mall in there, um, you're sad. You're, you're frustrated. You get angry. Everyone, no matter what your politics are, no matter, you know, SJW, anti-SJW, whatever it happens to be, no matter who you are, that bothers you. It bothers you when something that is a strong memory for you gets demolished and replaced with something new. So have some empathy to the comic fan who's going, wait a minute, I liked my legacy character. I'm, I, I grew up with this character. You're changing this character around and I don't like it. That I 100% understand and believe and experience myself. You know, I understand that these properties aren't mine. And my advice to all of you is start thinking that way a little bit more. It's hard. You, you grew up with this. You're your memories for sure, but we don't own them. As long as we don't own them, anything can happen to them. And if somebody wants to make the foolish decision to kind of torch the property and try and put something new in its place, it's, it's, their, it's their business. You know, uh, my grandfather gave me a lot of good advice. I was growing up would say, never get between a fool and their money. And, uh, and then he would kind of pause and go, well, I mean, if the fool's willing to give you their money, get between them all day long. But otherwise, if somebody's going to, you know, do something stupid and blow it, it's not your job to go save them. It's not your job to try and intercept that and help them make better decisions. And it may hurt because, you know, the decisions they make could torch things you love, but it is their money and it is their play. The best thing you can do is give yourself a little bit of distance. So I hope at least some parts of this resonate with you. It is, um, I, you know, it, it's, it's not casual. I mean, I may sound like, nah, it is what it is. What always cracks me up is when people come in all hot, like, uh, you know, perch, perch lies and perch, uh, perch is like that. What was it the phrase recently? Perch is like that dog in a meme that's just saying everything is fine while the world burns around them. I, I mean, <laughs> I hope you're joking. I know many of you don't when you say things like that because, you know, you really like the, the narrative of the, you know, heavy breathing, like, the woke politics are destroying all of our, all of our properties. And if we don't get in the way of, if, if we don't stop right now, they're coming for our children. And when they come for our children, they're going to come from us. And before you know it, I'm going to be strapped down to a table and they're going to gay me all day long. Like, okay. I understand how it's appealing <laughs> I understand how that can be entertaining. I, I just, uh, you know, it is stupid. I don't, I don't care how much it resonates with your, uh, as I say in, uh, in Grant Morrison's uh, work, your inner bug room, uh, the white hot room in your soul. It's fine. Um, it just, yeah, you know, under, understand it's a little bit ridiculous, you know, and, and when those, uh, when those people who are, who are running that game, you know, conclude with things like, uh, you know, and, and don't forget to support my Patreon and uh, Super Chats or <laughs> then just, just again, everybody's got an angle just, just for what it's worth, you know, <laughs> there's your angle. Hey, uh, well, this is Perch signing off, reminding you, if you have a way of uh, somehow not paying for the ads, uh, do it. I'm never going to ask you for a Super Chat. I don't have a Patreon and uh, I just want you to spend your money where you like it. So, uh, Try doing that. Thanks for listening.